Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about phase diagrams. Phase di diagrams describe the phase, that is liquid, water, gas, of substances at different temperatures and pressures. So if I just ask you what's the boiling point of water, probably 100 degrees Celsius comes to your mind, if you've memorized it. But that's actually just the boiling temperature of water at one very specific pressure. One atmosphere. The pressure at sea level. But if I take that water and I take it to the top of Mount Everest, it actually will boil at a much lower temperature because the air pressure pushing down on the liquid is less, and so that makes it easier to boil. So it turns out, if we want to ask what phase something is, we can't just specify temperature. We have to also specify pressure. And that gives us two axes, a y-axis and an x-axis. And that's what we do on phase diagrams. We plot our phase as a function of pressure on our y-axis and temperature on our x-axis. Now, you'll see all sorts of different phases that exist, and it turns out that there's all sorts of different phase changes. We're typically just familiar with boiling and melting, right? But there's also sublimation, and that's what this CO2 here is doing. CO2, dry ice, when it's solid, will go directly to a gas at room temperature and pressure. And we think of dry ice as being special, but actually what's special is just the pressure and temperature combination that it's at. We could make water do the same sublimation process. So we'll be able to look at all these sort of exotic behaviors of water or carbon dioxide or whatever the substance is by our phase diagram also. All right, let's take a look at one. So it looks sort of scary at first, but it's not that bad. We're just gonna start answering some questions about it, and I think that'll help you orient you what to what it is exactly we're looking for. So we're just going to ask some questions. What phase of water is present at 75 degrees Celsius and 1,000 kilopascals? Well, if we go to 75 degrees Celsius, that's maybe somewhere around there. And then we go to 1,000 kilopascals, that's maybe somewhere around there. And if we see where those meet, right about there, what phase is that? Well, that's liquid water. So everywhere in that purple region is liquid water. That tells us a bunch of different pressures and temperatures, as like order pairs, right, that are liquid. All right, let's look at another one. What phase of water is present at minus 30 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascals? Well, minus 30 degrees Celsius might be about there, and 101 kilopascals is there, and we see where those meet. Now we have solid. So this will tell us, right, like let's say you're going to a faraway planet and you wanna know, am I gonna have liquid water to drink? You can look at your phase diagram and know the pressure of the planet and the temperature of the planet and decide, is it gonna be solid or is it gonna be liquid? Pretty important, by the way, for investigating where life might be in the universe, right? All right, let's ask another question. What phase of water is at 380 degrees Celsius and 2300 kilopascals? So that's really hot and really high pressure. Let's take a look at where that would be. That would be right around here for the temperature and right about here for the pressure. Ooh, that's up in this weird region where it's beyond, you can see, what's called that critical point. The critical point is the temperature at pressure above which liquid and gas are no longer distinguishable. What you have there is called a supercritical fluid. It's one of those exotic behaviors that you don't see at most temperatures and pressures. But basically, if you put it at really high pressure and really high temperature, that means you can get almost like a super dense gas, which has some properties of liquids and some properties of gas, or you can think about it as a really not very dense liquid, which has some properties of gas and some properties of liquid. So right up here we have what's called a supercritical fluid, and that's above the critical temperature, which is 374 for water, and the critical pressure, which is 22,000 kilopascals. That's a really high pressure. So not behavior we see very often, but on our phase diagram, we can see that if you want to get water to this weird phase, well, that's the temperature and pressure we need to take it to. All right, now let's start thinking about these lines. So we have these lines and dots drawn all over the place. What do they tell us? The next question will help. So this says, at what temperature and pressure can water be solid or liquid? This is just saying, okay, is there a temperature and pressure where you could have either phase? And actually, you already know of a phase where there could be either. Zero degrees Celsius and one ATM can be solid or liquid water. And if I look at where that's represented, well... That is about right here. That is atmos one atmosphere of pressure, 101 kilopascals, and zero degrees Celsius. And that line is the line between ice and liquid, between solid and liquid. And that whole line, actually, not just that one point, 
describes phases, or I'm sorry, temperatures and pressures where you could have liquid or solid water. Both can exist at those temperature and pressures. That's the transition point. And if we think more carefully about that, that means if I pick this pressure and then I travel to the right with temperature, well, that means I would melt the ice into water. On the other hand, if I pick a temperature that's higher like this and I go to the left, well, now I would experience a phase change where I'm melting the water. I'm sorry, where I'm freezing the water. All right. Let's ask another question that's similar. At what temperature and pressure can water be solid or gas? Well, once again, there's a whole line of points that describe where it can be solid or gas. Now, you're not used to that line because solid or gas, that is describing the phase change between sublimation, right? Where we go directly from a solid to a gas. And so that's at really low temperature and also low pressure. Right? So anywhere along this line, the line that connects gas and solid, it could be either solid or gas. And again, when we cross that line, we're describing a phase change. So if I cross the line this way, I'm going from solid to gas. That would be changing the temperature and holding the pressure constant. Or I could cross in the other direction, lowering the temperature while holding the pressure constant, and I would go from gas to solid. So you can figure out all sorts of phase changes by thinking about how your position on this chart changes as you change temperature or pressure. All right, at what temperature and pressure can water be any phase? Well, that sounds weird. Well, there's actually a point down here where all three of our lines meet, and it has a special name. It's called the triple point, right here. And it's not a line, it's a point, as the name describes, but at exactly the triple point, water could be solid, liquid, or gas. That's the point at which we could be undergoing a phase transition between any three. And it occurs at 0 0.6 kilopascals and 0. 0, 0.01 degrees Celsius. So at the triple point, it's not that water is magically all three, it's that it could be either three. It could be liquid, it could be solid, it could be gas. A lot of people will say this in a confusing manner, which sounds like it's some new phase of water that's solid, liquid, and gas. That's not what's going on at the triple point. At the triple point, it can be either of the three, or any of the three. Okay, so I hope this has been a helpful brief introduction to phase diagrams. If you have any questions, please ask them below. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry.